actually live. We're live. Okay. So um, this next section is um, well. Sorry, it's already problems with the Moby board. We should restart, but we're not going to. Okay. So this is seven three, and this is solving systems. Uh, so solving systems. Uh, uh, it's with with it's really called solving multivariable systems. Um, uh, um, solving. I'm just gonna solving multivariable multivariable linear systems. Okay. I should read what I write down. So, not with just multivariable linear systems. So I'm going to erase this here. Right? Okay. And so, in other words, what you have is uh, you have three equations and three unknowns. We, we're not going to go beyond three equations and three unknowns, at least not, not for this. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, how you would solve those. Okay. So a uh, multivariable linear system looks like, um, and I try to write down one, x minus y, hey, Francesco, two, uh, two z equals one, y plus z equals y plus z equals 3 and z equals 2 okay this this is a this is a multivariable system you have three equations you have three unknowns actually now i have three i have one known and then i could solve that and get the two knowns but this is called the two other unknowns but this is called don't start with me it's, uh, this is called the row echelon form. I broke the E by mistake. I did do better when I write on the board. Um, but this is called the row, row echelon, row echelon form of a system of uh, three equations and three unknowns. Like, you know what an echelon is? You guys know what an echelon is? It's like, you know bicycle race or something? Or, uh, Echelon. E C H E L O N. Okay? Echelon. So like when birds fly in a pack, they fly in an echelon, kinda spread across like this, you know. It's like there's one at the top and then they spread out like this. So row echelon form, you have a coefficient. So the coefficient, the leading coefficient, leading coefficient, meaning the Co coefficient coefficient um, of each row is one. Of each row is one, and then it kind of goes like the first row has x, y's, and z's. The second row has just y's and z's, and the last row has z's. So this type, if you have something in row echelon form really, really easy to tell what x, y, and z are, right? Because you can use something called back substitution, okay? Back substitution, and uh, you can just substitute backwards is what that kind of means. Um, so I already, so if I want to solve the, the solution to the system, z equals 2, how would I find what y is? When I, I plug in z into this equation, right? So I get y plus 2 equals 3. I subtract 2 from both sides, right? I get y equals 1. And now I know what z is, and I know what y is. And I can plug those both into the top equation and to solve for x. So I know that x um, minus 1 plus 2 times 2 equals 1, right? And I could solve that, and I get x equals, let's see, 4 plus 1 is 3, right? And 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So what I end up getting is uh, 
this ordered pair, ordered triple, which gives you negative 2, comma 1, comma 2, would be a solution to this system of equations. You know what that tells you? What did that tell you, Francesco? Huh? It tells you, not where three lines, okay, but where three planes intersect, okay? So when you have, just so you know, when you have a, uh, and we'll talk more about three-dimensional graphing, three-dimensional systems and stuff like that, but um, in chapter 10. So we're not going to worry about how you graph them, but I just want to show you uh, what it looks like. Chapter 7, where is it? Intersecting planes. I tried to draw it on the board, but I had a really hard time with it. Okay? But if, uh, so each one of these um, equations can represent a plane, right? And so, uh, whoops, go back. There we go. Okay, now I should be able to find that. Okay, so if I have like this equation right here, three x plus two y plus four z equals twelve, you can graph it in a three-dimensional plane. In a three-dimensional plane, this is like the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. We do not need to know this for this chapter, okay? But just to give you kind of a uh, what you're getting when you get an answer, you could graph the plane because what you could do is cross out this and this and you can find the z-intercept. 4 times z equals 12, which tells you z equals 3. So this is the point zero, zero, 003. And then you cross out the x and the z, and you solve for y and get y equals 6. And you could graph the x, y, and z-intercept. And then you could graph that plane, and that plane would go on forever in all directions, right? So it would really be a plane that goes out this way, goes up this way, forever out this way. It keeps going on and ever, ever and ever, okay? And so when you solve a three-dimensional system or a, a system that involves x, y's, and z's, what you're finding is the point right there where all three of those planes intersect, okay? And that's very, very unlikely that that's going to happen in real life. If you, you took, like, three pieces of paper and you try to put them together and make them intersect in one point, it's hard unless you, you have to put, I mean, you could do it, but you have to kind of put two intersecting at a line and then one inter cutting through it, you know, and then you get that one point. So if you just have like three random equations and you say solve the system, it's very, very unlikely that you're going to get a solution to that system of equations, okay? So other ways that three planes or three equations could intersect is like this, in which case this would be no solution, right? Because they, they intersect at three different lines. And so you'd have, that's considered no solution because it's three different lines. This is considered no solution because these would be three different planes that don't intersect, right? They're in parallel planes. This is considered a solution except it's, um, there's infinite solutions, but those solutions are on that line, okay? Because, like, this is only, like, if I picked a point on this line, it would be only be a solution to two of those planes, not one. Whereas any point on this line would be a solution to all three of those equations. Do you understand the difference between that and that? Okay. And over here, if you're actually graphing the say, or, or if the equations are actually all the same, just in disguise, then you would get infinitely many solutions. Because I'll talk about that in a second, too. Okay? But the hardest thing is uh, using this thing called Gaussian elimination. It's not that hard, it's just tedious. Okay? So um, we're going to talk about that now. Okay? Um, tedious. Do you like tedious? Gaussian. G A Gaussian was some famous German mathematician guy. Okay, elimination, uh, Gaussian elimination is a process of putting a system of equations into row echelon form so that it's easy to, easy to find the solution. So x might, so here's a system of equations, x minus 3y plus 2z 
equals 1. And the other equation is 2x, 2x minus 5y uh, plus z, plus z, z equals negative 5. And the last one is 3x, 3x uh, plus y, plus y minus 2z equals negative 1. So what I'm trying to do when I do this is I want to get this looking like three things here, two things here, and one thing here. Okay? And I want this coefficient going down to always be 1. Okay? So, and the way I'm allowed to do that is there's some rules that you're allowed to buy. It's just like <coughs> what you do with two, two systems of equations. But here's the three rules you can use. You can, one, you can interchange rows. Interchange rows. Okay, so sometimes it's easier. Like if this row were down here, it'd be, I could just move this row up to here. Okay, which it makes, makes your life easy sometimes. The second thing you could do is uh, multiply <coughs> multiply by a constant. A constant, and uh, multiplying by a constant is the same as, is, uh, and dividing, I mean dividing you're really multiplying by a fraction. So multiplying, dividing, they're kind of like the same thing. And the third thing you can do is add, add or subtract, add or subtract rows. Okay, so I'm going to take you through, uh, take you through this one to put this one. So what we're trying to do is put this one in row echelon form. And usually what you want to do is first get, so in order to get it looking like there's x, y's, and z's, and then just y's in this row, I have to get rid of the x's over here, right? And I have to get rid of the x's over here, and then I'll worry about getting rid of the y. So first thing that you want to do is uh, get, let's, let's get rid of this 2x over here. So how could I get rid of this 2x using some of these rules over here? What could I multiply the top row by to get rid of this 2x? Negative 2, and then I'm going to add them together. So what they do, so I'm going to leave this top row alone because it's already good. x minus 3y plus 2z equals 1. And then I'm going to take this row, the, I'm going to take the first row right here, and I'm going to multiply. So what the way the notation they use, they take negative 2 times row 1 plus row 2, and I'm going to put that right over here, okay? So I'm going to take this, the entire row, multiply it by negative 2, and add it to this row and replace this row with that result. So what I so the reason I did that is to get rid of this x. So then what goes down here? What's negative two times negative three? It's positive six and plus negative five makes one y. So right here I have what? You guys get that? What I just did? Now I'm gonna take this one, negative three. I have to multiply everything by negative two. Or, sorry, I messed up. By negative two, right? So negative two times positive two is negative four. Plus z gives you negative three z. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. I am. Okay. Equals what? Equals negative seven. You guys with me there? Did I go? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, but, but I want this, see, I want this coefficient to be 1. So this row is already good, so I'm just going to leave it alone. But, and then I am going to, I don't want to rewrite it and then do it, because I want this to look like it is right here. Okay? So I'm multiplying this by negative 2, but I'm not showing that I did that, because then I have to rewrite it again, and then I have to rewrite over here. Yes? Uh, no, see. So... Yeah, so I'm just going to leave this alone because this coefficient is already 1. Okay? Then 
then I have this equation. Now, I want to get rid of the x's in this row as well. How can I get rid of the x's in this row? I could, and I could work with any of my rows right here, but how can I get rid of the x's over in this, in this row right here? What can I do to that first row again to get rid of the x's down there? Multiply by negative 3 again, right? Or ne not negative 3 again, negative 3. Multiply this one by, take row 1, you'll see, you can take row 1, multiply it by negative 3, and add that this time to row 3, right? And put that result down here. Because that makes this x go away. That makes this, I'm multiplying this by negative 3, so that becomes positive 9 plus 1 is positive 9 plus 1. 9 plus 1, you can do it. 10y. Yeah? You understand where that 10y came from? I'm multiplying the first row by negative 3, which makes this negative positive 9 plus 1 makes 10. What goes here? Very good, Jack. Minus 8z equals what goes here? Negative 4. Do you guys, do my, are we kind of going too fast here? Where did the x's go? They went away. I mean, I, I don't want to show every step because it's get, they didn't take like 37 sheets of paper. But so basically I'm taking this first row, right? I'm multiplying, so in that case I multiplied this first row by 3. This entire first row would give me negative 3x minus 9y minus 6z minus 3. And I'm adding it to this row down here, right? And in the previous step, I multiplied this row by negative 2, and I, or sorry, I multiplied this row by negative 2, and I added it to the second. Yeah? Anyone still confused? Uh, how, so now, I want to get rid of the y's in this row, because I want it to go, this is good, because the coefficient of this is 1, right? How can I get rid of this 10y down here? Multiply row 2 by negative 10 and add it to row 3. See that? Yeah? Okay, so now I'm going to rewrite this in a prettier color. Okay, so I, I come over here and I go x minus 3y plus 2z equals 1. And then um, you have y minus 3z equals negative 7 still. And now I am going to take this row, or I'm going to take row 2 times negative 10, and I'm going to add it to row 3, right? That says row 3 in case you can't read it. Uh, so that makes that I, I have nothing here, so when I wrote, multiply nothing by negative 10, I still have nothing, right? Multiply this by negative 10, I get negative 10y. Add it to this 10y, and I get 0y, right? And this, then I take negative 10. Negative 10 times negative 3 is positive 30, plus negative 8 makes what? No? Positive 22z equals, and I also have to multiply this by, sorry, this by negative 10, which gives you positive 70, and positive 70 plus negative 4 makes 66, okay? 66. One more step, because I want to get this into row echelon form, so this coefficient has to be a 1. How do I make that coefficient 1? Divide it, divide this entire row by 22, so I'm allowed to do that. That's the same as multiplying by 1 third. So when I take row 3 divided by 22, I get my new system x minus 3y plus 2z equals 1. I have my next row, which is y minus 3z equals negative 7. And then I have my last row, which is just z equals what? 
word C three, right? That questions what I just did. Now I'm going to use back substitution and find out what y and x are. Okay, so we're going to take z and I grab that and plug it in oh, to the previous equation. So I'm going to take z, plug it in there. I get y minus 3 times 3 equals negative 7. I get y equals 2. Okay? Now I'm going to take 2 and 3 and plug them in here for x and y. So I know, or uh, for y and z, sorry. So I know that this is 2 and this is 3. I'm going to find x now. Okay, so, uh, so I get x minus 3 times 2 plus 2 times 3. Oh, I know how to do those ones in my head. E equals 1. And this is 6, and this is 6. So I get x equals 1. So what that means is that these three equations, which represent planes in three dimensions, will give you x equals 1. So the, the ordered triple is 1, comma, 2, comma, 3. Is that right? 1, comma, 2, comma, 3? I think so. So that's where those three planes intersect. Questions about that? It's kind of a pain in the neck, isn't it? Kind of a pain. So just so you know, if it comes to taking, this is one technique of solving it, which is kind of nice, and it'll tell you in your homework, put these into row echelon form. Have you guys solved systems in three variables before? Where you just eliminate two of the variables and then you eliminate two of the other? So you can, uh, I mean, some people, like you combine these two equations to get rid of the x's, then you might combine these two equations to get rid of the x's, and then you have equations that just have y's in them, right? y's and z's. And then you combine those two equations to get rid of either the y's or the z's, yes? So you can do it that way, too. This is just another way of doing it, okay? And we're not going to have to do this like on a test. You'll have to do this one time, okay? Because I'm going to teach you how to do it with a graphing calculator in a little bit. And, uh, and that's why they have, like, supercomputers and stuff for solving systems of like multi, multi variables equations, because they can do all these calculations, like you give them a program, they tell them to do stuff really fast. That's how the guy in Interstellar went through the wormhole. Yeah, because he had to go through like four different dimensions, so they did like all these super complicated equations. And, they, and then they found a solution to get through the wormhole. And then every hour on the other planet was seven years in another, I forget how. Did you see that movie? It was pretty. Did you like it? But they said that it had a good physics base. It had a good physics base? Yeah, it was 100% physics accurate. Really? Until he went to the black hole. Oh, until he went into the black hole and Matt Damon tried to push him off the cliff. Matt Damon is usually a good guy. He is a bad guy. Okay. It, what if people haven't seen it yet? It's, like, it's <laughs> like so three years ago, you know. Uh, okay. okay. I wait till they come out on Netflix. That's what I'm okay, so um, we're not done yet. Sorry, Matt Damon is the Matt Damon is So just to show you, I'm not going to do another one of these because it takes too long. But um, to show you, sometimes you end up with equations that look like uh, this. So if you end up solving a system and, you put it and you've done all your work, which I was going to make you do in class, but I'm not going to make you do this right now because you have enough to do on your homework. But if I have y plus 2z equals, uh, equals uh, 1, and you end up with something down here in the third row, 0 equals 0, okay? What does that mean? No, if you end up with zero equals zero, that means infinite, infinite solutions, okay? Infinite <laughs> solutions. So there's some terminology that they use in the book, okay? And, um, and um, where's my notes, okay? Um, 
that another bit way to say infinite solutions is inconsistent. Okay? In so you have inconsistent. Okay? Inconsistent. And then you have, guess what? What's the opposite of inconsistent? Consistent. Consistent. Okay? Consistent. Okay? So inconsistent. And graphically, this could correspond to uh, uh, planes that don't intersect or they don't intersect at one point. So parallel planes, this could be like parallel planes, like that picture I showed you. Um, if you end up with something like this, it could also be like parallel lines. The intersection is parallel lines or something like that. Okay, intersection, intersect as parallel lines. Consistent is when you do have a solution, but there's two kinds of consistent, okay? One is called dependent, okay? Dependent, depend, dependent. And that's when you have infinite solutions, okay? Infinite solutions. And, uh, that can be the intersection of those planes is one line, okay? Or or the same plane, or same plane. Um, consistent could also be independent, independent, which means they intersect. Intersection is a point, okay? So uh, an example of a, um, an example, so this is an example of uh, consistent but dependent over here. If it were uh, independent, you'd end up with something like 3 equals, I mean inconsistent, you'd end up with something down here like 3 equals 7 or something like that. And then it says, well, 3 can't be equal to 7. So I have no solution and something and all that. Now in the book, they go through a long thing of if you did get a solution like this, then they actually come up with the uh, an equation for the different points that you could plug in here to make this equation true. And if you're interested in looking at that, you can. I did it with the last class. But I said they didn't have to know it, so I don't want to get you confused by teaching you stuff that you don't have to know. But basically, you solve this equation for y. You take that answer, you plug it in here, and then get an equation that just in involves um, x's and z's. And then you plug in a letter for z, and then you plug in various values for a, and you could come up with infinitely many points that would be the solution to this system. But if you're interested, plug in the book. Okay. And uh, that's all I have to tell you, okay? So uh, I'm going to stop. How long did I talk for? Uh, do you have any questions? <laughs>